Welcome back guys. In this episode I'm going to show you how to do a vintage kind of Hollywood glamour kind of look with those little starbursts that you associate with that kind of imagery. If you're new here, my name is Adam Brazier. I'm a beauty and fashion photographer from London. If you're not subscribed already, please consider clicking that subscribe button and let's get into the video. So you can see here the edit that we've brought into Photoshop. You can see if I turn this on, you can see the edit we're going to try and get within this episode. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to duplicate our background layer. And I'm going to show you like the first technique of giving that kind of Hollywood old school kind of vintage you look. So what we're going to do is just go filter blur Gaussian blur. And we're going to basically just bring that up a little bit until the details start to bloom out a little bit. So I'm going to bring it up to around 20. So you can see all the skin textures gone there. Everything, everything just looks really soft. That's kind of what, what look we're going for. So yeah, let's do that. Press OK. So now what we want to do is obviously we've lost all the detail here. We're going to kind of use a technique where we're just going to drop the opacity on this down to just a bit lower till we can start to see that kind of like softness come into the image that we want. So like almost like you've put kind of Vaseline over a lens or something, having that softness on top, but still keeping the details coming through. So yeah, so there I think that's quite perfect. So the next step is to do the stars. So the kind of little glow that you comes off in whatever direction you want. You can take this in many different ways. You can add as many starbursts as you want to it. So it's important to note that depending on how many stars you want in your starburst, that's the amount of times you need to duplicate the background. So if you want like a kind of a star with a cross, that's just say four points, you want to duplicate it twice. If you want it so there's six points, then you have to duplicate this three times and do it in three different ways. For now, we're just going to do it twice to do a simple kind of cross. So if we duplicate the background, we just take that above the other layer. Let's rename that blur effect, just blur. So on this layer, we're going to call this star. Let's call it star one. And then what we want to do is make an adjustment layer. Gradient map and make it black to white. And then we're going to bring the black down until we we're left with just the highlights. So the bits that we want to start, so you can see if you went too far, you lose kind of everything. Yeah, we want kind of a bloom to happen across these different bits here. So this is all kind of pers personal preference. So if you want it just to be on the earring and the cheek, then you can maybe leave it there. But I kind of want it to come across the image a little bit more. So yes, let's do that. So what we're going to do now, now we've got to where we're happy with. We're going to put a curves over the top of that and just brighten it up a bit. So it's even more contrasting, so it's really bright. And then I'm going to merge these three layers, the curves, the gradient map and our star into one layer. I've done that by pressing Command and E. So now I've got, I'm going to call this star one again. I'm going to duplicate that. So let's call this star two. Okay, so now what we want to do is go to do a motion blur. So we're going to go filter, blur, motion blur. And then we're going to pick an angle that our star is going to go at. If you pick like a 0, 90, 180, something like that, it's going to be completely flat, like vertical horizontally. So I think it's always good to kind of try and make it look a bit more real and have it at a slightly different angle. So as long as you're not on one of those, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, one of those kind of numbers. So I think we're going to go for, so let's start with like, yeah, 65. And then distance wise, you want it to spread a bit, but this will all depend on the size of your original image. So it's kind of enough that it's just going a little bit and the contrast is still there within it. So we're going to click OK. And then we're going to come to filter. And we're basically going to just let that repeat the same thing three times. So we've done it once already, let's do it twice now, and then once, once more time. And then what you'll see is actually it gets spikier towards the ends of these blurs now, whereas before it was quite like uniform, whereas now it feels like it's kind of fading out. Cool. So that's that one done there. Let's just bring that below the other one, come back to start one, and then go do the same again. Filter, blur, motion blur. And now because I want it to be at a right angle to the last one, I'm going to add 90 degrees to this. So we're at 65 currently. So that's going to make that, so that's going to be 155 degrees 
to be 90 degrees to our previous one, so at a right angle. And then we're going to go filter and then repeat the same action we did before. Once, twice, perfect. So now we've got these two layers here and you can see that they're going in different directions. So now what I want to do is blur them together. So I'm just going to change the top one to lighten. And you can see now we've got this effect where we've got these stars starting to form. So now what I want to do is merge these two together, select the both of them, command E, and then we're just going to change this mode to screen. And you can see if we look down at the earring here, so you can see how each of these crystals here is now like shining like a little star. So it's going in two different directions. And if you kind of went further with it, you, you could get more coming out. And then if you want them to be different lengths, you can just spread the motion blur to be shorter or longer. And then that will really affect how it looks. So once we're here, now it's important to think like, okay, what actually do we want to have a star burst? So we're going to just click on our star layer, click mask, press B to go to brush tool. And we're just going to paint black over the areas that we don't want to starburst so much or if there's anywhere that's over highlighted and I've got my flow here down to about eight percent so as I brush it's not fully affecting everything below it which allows me to be a bit more delicate on exactly where I paint over and then if we want to affect just that layer below so give it even more shine on the areas that we're happy with we can put a curves layer so like clipping mask and that will affect just the star layer below and then tweak up and down if we want this to be more or less of an effect. So you can see now if we do a before and after how you've got an original kind of modern looking image and then we turn it on and you've got this kind of like soft focus with these little star flares. And then from here we could kind of take it, make it black and white. We could just desaturate it a bit to make it a bit more old fashioned. So if we did a, so if we put a black and white layer on top, just reduce so have a play around with this and then bring your opacity down. You get, you get a bit of that kind of film noir kind of Hollywood kind of effect. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something there. If you do use any of these techniques and you post them on Instagram, please tag me as at Adam Brazier Portraits. If you're not subscribed already, do click that button and also click the bell next to it so you're notified next time I post a video. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments below or any thoughts or opinions on this video. Again, leave them in the comments below. And remember, always be creating. See ya.